Ted Clampett speaking. Good morning, Mr. Clampett. Our granny and Ellie back from the hills. No, but they do any minute, and I sure will be glad to see them. Keeping a wild animal fed is quite a chore. <laughs> well, no, ma'am, I don't mean Jethro. <laughs> Ellie left me with his grizzly cub. But he goes after vittles a heap like Jethro. You ever burp a bear, Miss Jane? <laughs> burp a bear? Well, no, I... Oh, good morning, Chief. If that's a personal call, I'll leave 15 cents. <laughs> if you'd like me to come over and help, I have had some experience handling beasts. Well, that's real nice of Miss Jane, but uh, Cousin Bessie is helping with the other little critters. Besides, Jethro will be back from the airport with the women folk any time now. Well, if there's anything I can do... Get out of the way! Come here! Uh, I'm afraid I have to hang up now. Captain Bly wants me. <laughs> you called? Where's my morning newspaper? Well, Chief, I, I don't think you should see it. It will only upset you. What could upset me after what I've been through with those hillbillies? Jethro gets his induction notice. Jed buys him a tank. I have to be his tank crew. He dresses me up like Von Hindenburg and I get arrested, and I'm going to be upset by the morning paper! Gee, everybody in the bank will hear you. Gosh. <laughs> this gets hot. I'll be ruined. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Chief. Oh, soldiers never cry. It's so unfair. Jethro dressed up like General Patton and nobody even saw him. Now, Chief, it's all over, Jethro. Return the tank and right now he's bringing Granny and Ellie home from the airport. Get me out of this thing. Granny, you're busting my eardrums. Hush up, both of you. <laughs> this is the last time I'm ever home. Females in my tank. Jethro? I thought you took that tank back to where you got it. I did, Uncle Jed. But when I seen the kind of respect the tank general gets, I had to buy it back. You should have seen him or salute me at the airport. Soldiers, sailors, Marines, Air Force. Granny and Ellie. In the tank. <laughs> Jed, fetch my medical bag. Are you hurt, Granny? No, it's for the general. I ain't hurt. I ain't down there yet. <laughs> Jethro's going in the army. Let's be easy on him. Jed, do you know what that boy put Ellie and me through? There ain't room in that thing for four. No, I am neither. Did you say four? Yeah, we brought you back a soup rice. Come on, Pearl. Oh, Pearl, come with you. Well, that's what we call her. Come on, Pearl. I'll take you out back, Pearl. We named the pig for Jethro's maw, because it was Pearl who gave it to us. Noisy oh, little critter. That pig was the quietest female in the tank. You're asking for it. <laughs> Watch out, civilian. You're talking to a four-star two-gun general. Take that suitcase is upstairs. Oh, I need me a A. Ah, first aid is what you're going to do. <laughs> thought you said Jethro got rid of this thing. Well, that was my understanding. Listen, there's only one way to stop this foolishness. Jethro must be inducted now, today. But he hasn't had his physical. We'll pull strings. That nut might decide to win the Navy and Jed will buy him a destroyer. <laughs> or the Air Force. And Jed might buy a B-52. What was that about me buying a B-52? <laughs> I was just wondering what you might buy me. I'm going to be 52. <laughs> Day. What do you reckon he'd like, Miss Jean? He'd like to be 52. <laughs> Where's Ellie May? She's out back with the pig. Oh. Is he still wearing that general's uniform? <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Jethro, he can't go in the army until he has a physical examination. I'll get my medical bag and take care of it. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> Go in yonder and take your clothes off, Jethro. What for? I'm going on maneuvers. I'm going to give you a physical examination. Uh, Granny, he'll be examined by an army doctor. Oh, no. 
It was one of them goomers that killed Jed's cousin. An army doctor? High ranking one, too. General Peritonitis. <laughs> General Peritonitis isn't a doctor. <laughs> we found that out. <laughs> oh, take your clothes off, boy. Granny, the army doctor. Ain't gonna get their hands on that child. To them, he's just a number. But to me, he's Pearl's baby. And I promised her I'd take care of him. Now, go take your clothes off, baby. Granny, couldn't you let the army doctors examine me? They're too rough, sweetheart. These are the soft, gentle hands of a healer. They's about as soft as a gator's hide. <laughs> Take your clothes off. How's it look? Oh, Mr. Clampett, don't waste your time polishing this silly little old tank. Maybe you're right. Jester wants me to buy him a great big brand new one. <laughs> it, it, it's just a beautiful thing. Uh, uh, please, Mr. Clampett, don't buy Jethro any more equipment. The Army will take care of that. They'll train him, outfit him, give him three square meals a day. They'll turn him into a real fighting man. They sure will if they cut him down to three meals a day. <laughs> Where is the boy? Well, Granny's giving him his physical examination. Now, that's another thing the Army will take care of. Not like Granny. <laughs> Temperature's normal. 142. 142 ain't normal. It is if your thermometer has been sterilized in boiling water. <laughs> Sit down. Cross your leg. I want to check your reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> Busted back to a civilian. 
what she was hardly hearing. I put corks in his ear. What's for? So the wind won't blow through. <laughs> I'm telling you, Jed, if you was to finger his ears, blow into his mouth, you could play his head like a ocarina. <laughs> The young man Mr. Drysdale talked to you about is here, uh, Jethro Bodine. Oh, yes. He's the young man who's so anxious to join up. Yes, sir. By George, it's a pleasure to meet a boy like that. I'm getting sick to my stomach of those draft dodging, card burning hippies with their psychiatric cop outs. They're turning our national symbol from an eagle into a chicken. <laughs> now, a boy comes to me who can't wait to serve his country, a boy who loves his country. A boy with blood in his veins instead of flowers in his hair. <laughs> What's he look like? Well, he's a big husky fellow, sir. He looks like he came right out of the hills. Another Sergeant York. Well, here's one boy that head shrinking down the hall isn't going to section eight. Bring him in. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Bodine, would you step in here, please? <laughs> Matt, a game leg and he's ready to fight. You're a real patriot, my boy. Huh? Don't you hear, boy? What'd you say? Crippled. Hard of hearing, and he's ready to serve. <laughs> Can you see, boy? What? Don't you worry, lad. We'll mend that broken body. You've got the soul and the spirit of a hero. Lord Nelson had only one arm, but he saved England. <laughs> Process him, Sergeant. <laughs> yes, sir. Come in. Good afternoon, Colonel. Well, what do you want, head shrinker? You're gonna psych out some more of those mother-hating hippies? No. No, I came in to talk to you about your hillbilly hero. Oh? Superboy, Jethro Bodine. Look here, couch jockey. You're not gonna make one of those Freudian freaks out of this boy. He's got real soldier material. He's the new Sergeant York. You mean Sergeant Bilko. What? I talked to some pretty clever draft dodgers in my day, but this boy is the greatest. Now, you don't know what you're talking about. This boy wants to serve. You just haven't been able to communicate with him. He's hard of hearing, you know. Not anymore. I took the corks out of his ears. Corks? <laughs> right ear. Left ear. Oh, come on, Doc. No boy is that stupid. I didn't say he was stupid. In my book, he's a genius. We have had fellows come in here with the lawyers, the mothers, the teddy bear. This boy does it with corks and a limp. Well, he limps. He's got a stiff leg. Not anymore. I took off the phony splints. What do you mean, phony? That boy was in pain. Sure he was. His grandmother hit him in the knee with a hammer. He's also the one who put the corks in his ears. Well, that's understandable. His grandmother doesn't want him to leave home. He's the breadwinner. They're poor. Not anymore. They've got $60 million. Huh? They live in a mansion in Beverly Hills. Then why did he come in here dressed in those old clothes? I tell you, he is a genius. Get a load of this kid's reasoning. Now, he wants us to think that he's stupid enough, to think that we're stupid enough, to think that he is stupid enough. Ah, baloney, <laughs> let me tell you something, psychiatrist. Jeffro Bodine came to me recommended personally by one of the most eminent citizens of Beverly Hills, president of the Commerce Bank. Uh, you mean Field Marshal von Hindenburg? <laughs> I don't understand this. It's all part of an elaborate plan to keep this boy out of the army. I tell you, it's brilliant. They have spared no expense. The brain that conceived this idea. Come in. Excuse me, sir. You too, sir. Can I join the army now and go to the front and commence to fighting? Really want to go, Jethro? Oh, yes, sir. There's just one thing. Sure would like to have me some vittles first. What? Oh, that's what the boy calls food, Colonel. Jethro, sit down, son. Yes, sir. Thank you. Colonel, this is where he really showed his brilliance. He had me convinced that he was a compulsive eater. Let me show you something. 
What is this ink blot a picture of? The, the, the truth now. It's a nude woman. Of course. <laughs> and uh, Burns? Same thing. That's right. They're all nudes. You know it, I know it, and Rorschach knows it. Get a load of this reaction. <clears throat> Jethro, what, uh, what is this? Oh, that's a picture of the ham hockey showed me a four. <laughs> and, uh, this? Hog jowls? Pork chops? Chitlin? Possum shanks? Oh, man, ain't she a beauty? What is it, Jethro? Big, fat, old turkey hen. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jethro. Can I join now? It won't cost you nothing. Uncle Jed's going to pay my way. Pay your way in the Army? Well, yes, sir. Board, room, uniform, guns, tanks, airplanes, everything. I wonder if I could talk to this uncle of yours. Sure. You can talk to my whole family. I'd like that. I'll go <laughs> fetch him right on down. Hey, and I can show you some of the things my Uncle Jed done bought for me, too. Hey, now you wait right here now, you hear? Don't worry, we will. <laughs> what do you suppose is keeping the boy? He's getting his family together over at Central Casting. Well, he could have a family, you know. Oh, mark my words. He will walk in here with the wildest so-called family you've ever seen. Ah, uh, you're a cynic. I still say that that boy... Right in here, sir. Stand at ease, man. Zephro? Well, how do you like it? Uncle Jed bought it for me. The whole family come with me. Are they loaded? Yeah. Granny's the only one that ever takes a nip. <laughs> Is that Granny? No, of course not. That's Cousin Bessie. And that there's Ellie. Mrs. Granny. And that there's Uncle Jed. This is my whole family. <laughs> Wild enough for you? Now you must be the rich uncle. Oh, I don't know what you could call me rich. I got about 60, 65 million. Dad Morby just spent 10 million on our castle in England. Ellie, he ain't interested in our castle. I am. <laughs> you have a real castle? Yes, sir. Big one? Yes, sir. With a moat and drawbridge and uh, knights in armor? Yes, sir. Any dragons? Yes, sir. Knock it off. You must be Granny. That's right. You the one who put the caulks in Jeffro's ears? Yep. Was it to keep the boy out of the draft? No. It was to keep the draft out of the boy. <laughs> hey, you must be uh, Cousin Bessie. Well, no, sir. I I'm Cousin Ellie. This here's Cousin Bessie. Wanted to bring Pearl along, but Granny wouldn't let me. Well, she was too gamey with all of us closed Granny, up. Granny ain't interested in Pearl. I am. Um, <clears throat> Pearl is Jethro's mother. I'll give you two to one. He fakes a hostility. Watch this. Jethro. Yes, sir. How do you feel about Pearl? What's there to feel? She's a pig. <laughs> Terrible thing to say, boy. It's true. She smelled bad enough when there was just the four of us in the tank. What tank? Oh, the tank my Uncle Jed bought me. Uh, you can see it. It's parked right out front, yonder. Well, leastways, Jed, they feed them good in the army. What you mean? Looky here. Ham hock. <laughs> pork chops. <laughs> Chitlins. Possum shanks. Well, are you ready to see it my way? Is he the draft dodging champion? I guess so. What will I do with him? Put him in intelligence. He's a genius. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jeffro, you can take your family back to the studio now. Uh -huh. You'll hear from us. Uh, am I going in the army? Oh, very likely, very likely. But first, we'll have to find just the right spot for a fellow with your brain. Yeah. You hear that? We're well, proud of you, boy. He's the first one in the family to graduate sixth grade. <laughs> Well, uh, thanks for coming, folks. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah, bye. You'll hear from us, Jeffro. Thank you. Oh, Jeffro, you, you, you don't really hate Pearl, do you? Heck no. I'm going home right now and give her a bucket of slop. <laughs> Playing it right to the finish. The girl, 
the ape, grandmother, the millionaire uncle, all piling it in that little tank. There goes the general, a real authentic genius. I sure hope the army can draft him before the CIA hears about him. <laughs> Au revoir, mon general. A better man than I am, Gunga Din. <laughs> suit I made for Ellie. He'll propose between his howdy and his duty. Ellie's already got a bathing suit. Not like this one. Ellie, get down here and model your new suit for your pa. I hope you didn't make her one of them new uh, bikinis uh, Jethro's always talking about. Golly, I might have. I copied it from the last movie magazine that Pearl sent me from back home. Here I am. <laughs> No beacon It's right off the cover of Cinema Sirene. Clara Bow was wearing it. I'd he rather wear my regular bathing suit. No more bare legs. When a boy sees that much skin showing, he's liable to think there's something other than a lady. That's why he'll think I'm a fella. <laughs> don't believe there's gonna be a problem. Oh, oh, tell Granny you don't look right. Kid, tell Elliot does so. Now, hold on. I've lived around women long enough to know there's only one way to settle these things. Get somebody else to decide. Now, now Mr. Drydale and Miss Jane is coming over this morning to get me to sign some checks. We'll ask them what they think. What matters is what Troy Apollo thinks. Don't worry, honey. He'd like you even if he was wearing a rain barrel. One of them sure would be a lot cooler than this. Oh, why don't you go up and stand by your window? That way you can catch a breeze and keep your eye peeled for Troy at the same time. <laughs> Ain't you overdoing it a little for this fella? Why? Just because I put a few signs out on the front porch. What signs? Sooners <laughs> line up here. Don't crowd. Make your marriage proposals brief. Others are waiting. After he sees all these signs, he'll propose. Just so he won't feel left out. Granny, I'm ashamed of you. Well, Ellie May's gonna need all the help she can get. It won't be too long before she is a full-fledged spinster once she comes boating age. Granny. And then all she'll need is a shawl and a rock and chair and, and a canary. Please stop. It's just a matter of time before she goes walking down that aisle all dressed in white. Yeah, with hair to match. <laughs> Howdy. Ready to go. W welcome, Troy Apollo. Is this for that young singer? Yeah, he's got a blind date with Ella May this afternoon. Oh, wonderful. Blind dates are great. Oh, it's a lot of fun. And isn't that a fine-sounding name, Troy Apollo? He's right anxious to meet Ellie, too, according to Mr. Cushing. John Cushing of the Merchants Bank set this up? My competition? That's right. Oh, wait, Mr. Clampett. These blind dates never work out. <laughs> the man's a total stranger. <laughs> Only a weirdo would have a kooky name like Troy Apollo. <laughs> Never set much store by a man's handle. As far as there being strangers goes, uh, they won't be once it's introduced. Oh, that cushion! <laughs> well, that's right nice of him. Got me right in the heart, too. <laughs> well, let's go inside and check. 
I'll get the goose quill. <laughs> All the underhanded lowdown. Now, Chief, you have been putting off getting Elliot Tate. I rather suspected that one day Mr. Cushing would steal your thunder. Who cares about my thunder? He's trying to steal the clap of the town. <laughs> Please don't stamp your foot again. Why not? It's very childish and extremely painful. Oh, <laughs> what do you know about pain? A few broken toes. I stand to lose my biggest account. That is pain. Now, hang on, Chief. There's always the possibility that Troy and Ellie will hate one another. Oh, what a joy that would be. <laughs> but I just can't sit here and hope I've got to do something. Chief, you won't stand in the way of Ellie's happiness. Of course not. But I'm going to find someone who will. You mean competition for Troy Apollo? Right. And he's going to get here first. But who are you going to ask? Oh, what wow. does it matter? Some pleasant, nice-looking fellow. I'm going to start by asking Cary Grant. <laughs> There were so many checks to sign, Mr. Clapper. I never thought spending money could be this tiring. Before you go, I want you to look at Ellie's new outfit. Ellie May! Hello, Miss Jane. Oh, hello, Ellie. My, my, that is a nice-looking little dress. Uh, Miss Jane, uh, it ain't a dress. It's a bathing suit, and we like your thinking on it. Your honest opinion. Granny, to, to be honest with you, it's... Absolutely archaic. <laughs> See, I told you she'd love it. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Chief. Wait till you see who I found for Ellie. He just won the title. Mr. Clavin, I have a date for Ellie. She already has a date. <laughs> when she sees this boy, she'll throw rocks at Troy Apollo. Ellie, here's someone very interested in meeting you. May I present Mr. Universe? So long, Dave. Is that fellow a date for me, Pa? That's right. Kind of unusual name, Dave Universe. That ain't all that's strange. Look at his arms. Swole up twice the normal size. <laughs> Although that Dave won't talk, he just stands there flexing his muscles. Now just make yourself to home, Mr. Universe. Thank you, and call me Dave. All right, call me Jed. This here's Ellie and this is Granny. Hi, Ellie. Granny? Dr. Granny. I hope you don't mind, but being a physician, I couldn't help noticing how you're, uh, uh puffed up all over. Puffed up? Yeah, you well, know, I guess you could call it that. I used to weigh 90 pounds. Oh, when did you first notice that your shape was changing? <laughs> oh, I suppose within a week or two after I got the barbells. The barbells, huh? That's what done all this? Right. But enough about me. Ellie, why don't you get into a bathing suit? <laughs> I'm already in one. Oh, I get it. You're wearing it under your sweatsuit. <laughs> what was that? Don't say nothing, remember? He's a sick man. <laughs> Will you hurry up, Miss Hathaway? It's hot out here with the top down. <laughs> Your concern is touching me. But you have other worries. Something tells me that's Troy Apollo. <laughs> You're just too marvelous, too marvelous for words. <laughs> Mr. Apollo, I'm Open Drysdale. Pleasure is all yours. <laughs> you are here to have a date with Ellie Mae Clavett, right? You said it, ma'am. <laughs> Where is she? Look on the front porch. That's Ellie Mae Clavett? <laughs> you said it, man. <laughs> Mr. Cushing told me she was a real dish. I should have asked him what. <laughs> Look, I, I got a recording session. Why, you haven't even met Ellie. Oh, well, I wish I could. Uh, give her my regrets and tell her to stay with her weightlifting. Maybe it'll help. Anyway, it can't hurt. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to sit down and rest a bit, Mr. Universe? Dave, 
And Ellie, I think we'd better get down to business. You know, I've only got this afternoon, and then that's it. And you want to spend it with me? <laughs> that's right. I want to make you the next Miss Universe. Well, Dave, I know you ain't got much time, but we just met one another. Well, so what, Ellie? I can see you're a beautiful, charming girl. You've got a lovely figure, I think. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Uh, thank you, Dave, but uh, I'd better go and see if Granny's got lunch ready. No, oh, there's everything in this book from ballers to bow legs. But not one word about barbell bloat. You notice it's affecting the boy's memory, too. Can't seem to remember his name. Has to have Mr. Universe printed across his shirt. I've got to find a cure for that ailment. But nobody seems to know anything about it. Well, Granny, why don't you try the AMA? Of course. Apodaster's Medical Almanac. I keep it in the kitchen. Because it's got a dandy recipe in it for pecan pie. <laughs> well, that Mr. Universe just up and asked me to marry him. I should have known this would happen. You and that bathing suit would turn a healthy man's head. Hey, are you sure? Well, he come right out and said he wanted me to be the next Miss Universe. <laughs> next Miss Universe? Then he must be a widower. The boy has had his share of trouble. What am I gonna do? You sure can't marry him. Shame, but I gather he ain't long for this world. He said he only had this afternoon, and that was it. You ain't got much time, Granny. Anything on barbells and medical almanac? Nope. The only thing under B is belly aches and blueberry muffins. And then I reckon it's beholden on all of us to see to it that his last hours are as comfortable as possible. But howdy. Hi. I don't believe we've met. My name's Jethro. <laughs> <laughs> you could have caused a lot of damage just then. Nah, that bar's made of steel. I wasn't squeezing with all my strength. What is Jethro? Mr. Drysdale Warren, uh, he told me about you. <laughs> I put you one up on me. I don't know nothing about you. What do you do mostly? Look around and guess. Well, let's see, uh, Mr. Drysdale told you about me, huh? I know! You're a brain surgeon. <laughs> Try weightlifting. Shucks, I don't need to. I already got plenty of muscles. Yeah, and I can see where all of them are. Thank you. <laughs> Say, you're a brain surgeon. How come you got Mr. Universe right across your chin? <laughs> Look, Jethro, I'm not a brain surgeon. My name is Dave. I'm a weightlifter, and I'm here to coach Ellie May. She's entered the Miss Universe contest. Well, say, how about that? Anything I can do to help? I don't suppose you'd leave. <laughs> Man, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> well, I left a couple of dumbbells out on the front porch. You think you could bring them back here for me? Sure. What are their names? <laughs> their names? Well, I got to call them something. They're dumbbells. I'll be the judge of that. What? I don't believe in mean-mouthing folks just because they ain't smart as me. <laughs> well, Granny's working on her cure. You go down there and keep Mr. Universe's mind off his trouble. <laughs> Granny, do you see what I see? I sure do, Jed. You got to admire his spunk. Swall up as he is. That poor boy is trying to build himself a wheelchair. <laughs> is Ellie out by the pond with Mr. Universe? Best I seen. How you coming with your barbell cure? Slow. I can't find a new laid buzzard egg for it. There's always plenty of them around, except when you need one. <laughs> <laughs> when you need one. <laughs> Howdy, Jed Clampett speaking. Oh, Mr. Cushion, uh, we ain't seen this Troy Apollo fella. Yes, uh, well, uh, Troy is here at my bank, Mr. Clampett. See, there's been a little mix-up, but he's leaving right now. Well, uh, Ellie's already got a... Well, I reckon uh, Troy and her did have a date. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll have Ellie meet Troy out in front of the house, and we'll work it out from there. Fine, Mr. Clampett. <laughs> well, I'll be talking to you. Goodbye. All right. 
Now, the real LMA is expecting you at her place. And if you see that Drysdale again, run over his foot. <laughs> now, get up there fast. I can't go too fast, man. The top's down, and I just got my hair the way I wanted it. <laughs> Move! She'll be waiting for you out front. Then comes my next favorite pet. That's Esmeralda, my goat. Ellie. And then my favorite pet of all, Cousin Bessie yonder. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's a little beauty, or That's a very pretty bathing suit. <laughs> Of bathing suits, Ellie. If you plan to be Miss Universe, you're gonna have to do something about that one. I like you a lot, Dave, but I couldn't be Miss Universe. Oh, now, Ellie, don't say those things. You're gonna have that title if it kills me. Dave. Now, come on, Ellie, we'll warm up for a few laps around the pool. Okay. Well, I reckon if you get toward a swimming, you sure won't have no trouble of fun. <laughs> Get out of the water with that outfit on. Oh, it's ugly, but it is a bathing suit. Hey, you told me you shouldn't get it wet. I don't know why. I do. It's commenced to squeezing on me. It's true. I mean, from the sound of it, it ain't stopped shrinking yet. I, I gotta change. Excuse me, Dave. Any friends of Dave's around? Zone. A hospital zone? I ain't got time to explain. I'm looking for a buzzard's egg. I might have to go outside of Beverly Hills to find one. Well, you're standing in the right place. There's a car coming that's gonna knock you clean to Pasadena. <laughs> I think that might be Troy Apollo. Run, get Ellie. <laughs> Troy Apollo? Yeah, but you can forget about him. He tore out of here like a scalded cat. <laughs> he didn't like the looks of the house. <laughs> anyway, we got to turn our attention back to Mr. Universe. He may be sick, but at least he's interested. <laughs> That's my cure, Jed. Hadn't you better turn the fire off so it'll cool down? Oh, it is cool. You should have seen it bubble when it was hot. <laughs> That may cure barbell bloat, but it looks like it'll kill a patient doing it. Oh, Mr. Universe is taking a chance. But either way, he gains. If it don't cure him, at least he's saved from a lingering death. I believe I'd mention that to Dave. He may not agree he's getting all that good a deal. Ellie's fetching him. But he better not pass this up. It's the best medical science can do for him. There he is, Granny. Right with you, Granny, as soon as I take a few of these nutrient pills. I'd fall over without them. Well, you can forget them and the barbells, Mr. Universe. The end is in sight. One way or another. <laughs> Come on, Ellie. All we can do now is hope. Dave is in the hands of a specialist. <laughs> I want you to take this. Here. Granny, if that's lunch, thanks, but I brought along my own special food. What for? Well, it's all I eat, you know, organic foods like soy biscuits and alfalfa and bone meal, ground kelp. Dave, I think you eat nothing but that kind of stuff. It's maybe the reason you look like you do. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> it's that and the barbells. I'm gonna fix you a decent meal before it's too late. But, Granny, I don't have an appetite for regular food. You ain't tasted it the way I fix it. Here. <laughs> Granny, did you make this? Yeah. If you don't mind, I think I'll stick to the ground kelp. <laughs> they don't answer the knock. They must not be home. If they are home. And you are going to meet the real LMA Clampett, or I'm withdrawing my bank support for you. And that means you can say goodbye to your ambition to become United States Senator from California. <laughs> but even I can't win the election on my singing voice alone. <laughs> Go around back and find Ellie May. And to make sure you stay here, I'm going to take your car. I'll pick you up later. Mr. Cushing. Don't press me, Troy. 
I'm still not sure that America is ready for a senator who uses curlers and a hairnet. <laughs> Ellie! Ellie, come on, let's go to work. Ellie! I don't care how much my country needs me. It's not worth taking her out. I don't care if she is a snappy dresser. Here I am, Dave. You feeling any better yet? Ellie, I feel great. Dave, you'll strain yourself. You hadn't ought to be lifting all that weight. <laughs> Ellie? Ellie, where did you get all that strength? Well, Granny says we're healthy because we always eat the right foods. Well, like for dinner, we usually have hog jowls and collard greens and grits and... Ellie, thank you, and I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> okay, I'll straighten up while she has gone. <laughs> The universe is saved. My cure started to work. He's got his appetite back to normal food. I didn't know he'd ever lost it. You should have heard the things he was eating before he took my cure. But a bit ago, he came running in here, hollering for triple helpings of my hog jowls, collard greens, and grits. Fine, Granny. Now you better get started on your next cure. What next cure? For indigestion. Eating triple helpings, Mr. Universe is going to need it. <laughs> 